Hello friends and welcome into College Football Now. I am Tom Downey. Some fairly big college football rumors out there. Deion Sanders, Matt Rule among them. We're going to begin though with the latest on Lane Kiffin and the Auburn Tigers. The Lane train remains very heavily linked to the program. There was the report out of Mississippi that he had already accepted the job. He was going to leave today after the Egg Bowl and of course as of filming he has not taken that job right now. Kiffin publicly has said he's going to stay at Ole Miss, that he's not going to take the job, etc. Disputed that report, which we did break down earlier this week, by the way. Shout out, shout out to our other CFP crew, Harrison Graham, etc. That video looked a little bit like this. There's been some more Deion Sanders rumors that we'll get to as well. And never miss a thing here on Chat Sports when you guys are subscribed. YouTube.com slash at Chat Sports. We got free coverage for you guys every single day. Your one-stop shop for the NFL, college football, NBA, lots of college football rumors. And we're going to keep you guys covered with the transfer portal, which is basically college football free agency. Once that gets going early next month, this is your one-stop shop, so make sure you guys are subscribed. Amid all the rumors of Lane Kiffin and Auburn, where it kind of seems like Auburn has Lane in their sights and he's their number one target right now, there is this to consider too. And oh, Kiffin has kind of poked fun of himself a little bit, but also it's like a bad thing. Ole Miss, after getting as high as number seven in the AP poll, has then gone one and four since then, a blowout loss to the hands of LSU. Sneaking by a bad Texas A&M team, a narrow loss against Bama, a, a, a loss that wasn't even as close as the score indicates against Arkansas, and then of course a heartbreaking Egg Bowl loss to wrap up the season. Lane has been the number one guy for Auburn if you believe the media reports, which can always be a bit dicey when it comes to coaching searches. Also make note, no one's been offered the job because that's of course how it goes. Everybody gets their first guy even if they're turned down eight times because no one offers it until it gets accepted. It's, I hate that thing about college football. The number two option appears to be Hugh Freeze. A uh, good insight from the ESPN report earlier this week that has Kiffin 1, Hugh's, Hugh Freeze 1B there. Continues to have success at Liberty despite some quarterback woes this year. Eight wins minimum every single year. Had a lot of success at Ole Miss. Plus, of course, the off-the-field stuff as well, which I think understandably show should raise some concerns. What is worth noting here, specifically for Hugh Freeze, is that he just got an eight-year extension last month through uh, 2030 season. Now, he's under contract, fully guaranteed deal, mind you, with Liberty for well over half a decade uh, at Liberty right now. And I'm very curious how that would impact things in terms of Hey, what's the buyout? If you're Auburn, it probably doesn't matter that much, and maybe Hugh Freeze was trying to help make sure Liberty gets a nice little bonus in terms of if I do leave, you're still getting paid a good amount of money. But, of course, it's all about the lane train here. So will Lane Kiffin take the Auburn job? Why for yes and for no? I think there was at least a one premature report, but we don't know exactly what's going to happen. So let me know in the comments section. Will Lane Kiffin take the Auburn job? If the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, type in Y for yes or N for no. Do you think Lane Kiffin will end up taking the Auburn job? If the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Let's talk Deion Sanders now. As Colorado has reportedly offered a rather big contract for Deion Sanders, and their first choice right now appears to be primetime. There's also been reports that South Florida, as we broke down in the earlier video we talked about there, which is also in the comments section, is in the market for Dion. If you're into the flight tracker season like I am because it's too much fun, uh, interesting flights from Jackson, and then it ends up to Tampa, and it's all very interesting there. This was the report earlier this week from Adam, and I'm probably going to pronounce your last name wrong, so I'm sorry. Munster Tiger from 24-7 Sports. Tiger, maybe? I'm not sure. He says Colorado has put forth a very impressive offer to Deion Sanders. It would make him one of the highest paid coaches in the Pac-12. Obviously, money is not the biggest motivating factor for Sanders, but he would be able to take care of his staff financially, which is important to him. The ball is in his court from what I've heard. The idea of prime time ending up at Colorado is not what many of us had expected from that standpoint. Of course, there had been so much buzz around, hey, FSU, if that job comes open. Maybe he does take the Colorado gig. At some point, he's going to leave his current spot and go to a bigger, probably more Power 5 program, or maybe South Florida. What job do you think Deion Sanders will end up taking next? Colorado, South Florida. Maybe he waits a cycle since he's had so much success this year with JSU. 
Let me know in the comments section and make those predictions for me right now. Now, if it's not prime time for Colorado, there are some other candidates who have been linked by 24-7 Sports, ESPN, etc. The one big name to monitor here is Ryan Walters, who is currently the defensive coordinator out at Illinois, who, as I'm sure Buffalo fans know, most has it been the past been a Buffalo player. He's an alumnus. There's a lot of connections there. They've been linked to other former head coaches, Tom Herman, Bronco Mendenhall, with differing degrees of interest depending on which site you end up reading there. Matt Entz, the head coach from uh, North Dakota State, because that's a good pipeline, has been linked. Jeff Chote, the DC from Texas as well. I kind of think it's prime time or Walters because, hey, you hire the alum, and that tends to go over very well with fellow alumni and alumnus at Colorado. Today's edition of College Football Now is sponsored by Established Titles. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to help preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. It's a project based in the historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. Title packs at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. They plant a tree with every order and work with global charities, one tree planted and trees for the future to support those global reforestation efforts. You can officially include the title Lord or Lady on your credit card, plane ticket, dating profile, etc. Makes a great last minute gift. And the first 200 people who purchase a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking distance. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our own little CFB Now kingdom. It makes an amazing last-minute gift. And Established Titles is actually running a massive holiday sale right now with discounts up to 80% off. Plus, if you use code CHAT, that's C-H-A-T, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash chat to get your gifts now to help support the channel. That's EstablishedTitles.com slash chat to get those gifts and help support the channel. That link, by the way, is in the comments section and in the description. Check it out today, EstablishedTitles.com slash chat. And all that stuff on Lane Kiffin, Deion Sanders, that's more rumors. This stuff on Matt Rule in Nebraska well, that's much more newsy. ESPN report from earlier today, not that long ago, basically right before we started filming today, is that Nebraska has focused on hiring Matt Rule as their next head coach, a potential home run hire in this cycle for the Cornhuskers. Now, this is not a done deal as of this point. The contract has to be worked out. There's some stuff with the Carolina Panthers, with what they owe, with what Nebraska's going to pay that has to be sorted out there. Not going to be done until Nebraska's game is over either, and maybe you keep Mickey Joseph as a, as a coach somewhere on that staff but Matt Rule is a much better option than most teams will be able to hire this cycle and you look at what else Nebraska was reportedly in the market for based on an earlier ESPN report it was Jeff Monk and the head coach at Army Gary Patterson quickly out of retirement from TCU now the assistant uh, defensive special assistant for Texas Dave Dorn and NC State like those names Patterson's the most intriguing for me but Matt Rule would be a fantastic home run hire, uh, the most realistic hire they could have been able to pull off. I'm sorry, guys. I don't think Matt Campbell was coming to Nebraska. That's too much of a lateral move for him. Matt Rule has done a fantastic job in both of his previous college football stops. Rebuilt the Temple program and quickly. Rebuilt the Baylor program from its ashes and quickly. Now, it didn't work in Carolina with the Panthers. That's an NFL job, and I don't think Matt Rule was quite suited to be an NFL head coach. A college football coach, though, he's proven it at two different stops that I would argue are we're probably more challenging than what he gets right now in Nebraska. I love this move by the Huskers, assuming it does get done. It's news that they're focusing on him and they're having the contract. Not quite news that's been signed yet from that perspective. And I want to hear from you guys here too. Grade the potential hire of Matt Rule by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. A, B, C, D, or F. You can sound off for me in the comment section. I'm all aboard. I'm giving it an A because I don't think there's anything better Nebraska would have realistically done than landing Matt Rule. So once that's done, it's an A, but you guys can sound off for me in the comment section. Last two teams we'll discuss here, Georgia Tech and Wisconsin, and both have a similar fear with or feel with a lot of interim head coach candidacy here. Brent Key has gone 4-3 and three as the Georgia Tech interim head coach, and that's really impressive stuff because Georgia Tech had won a handful of games under Jeff Collins. 
Brent Key comes in, upsets North Carolina. The players are playing better than they ever did for Jeff Collins. He is a very real candidate to keep this job as more than just the interim head coach from that standpoint, and I'm quite impressed with what he's done so far. The other candidates who have been linked, uh, some football scoop, athletic, ESPN articles here. Bill O'Brien, which oh, I don't like watching his offense at Alabama. I don't think he's that good. But the new guy in charge of the coaching search has ties to O'Brien and Alabama. Brent Key does as well, by the way. Seems like they did interview Jamie Chadwell. That'd be fun. I think he, I, I, I want to see him get a shot at a bigger program. Georgia Tech would be a logical step. I would much rather have Chadwell than Bill O'Brien. Brent Key, of course, you mentioned. Willie Fritz also been tied to this job after a not-so-great year last year. Much better this year for Tulane. Of the open college football head coaching jobs, and we will include Nebraska in this list for our purposes, what's the best one currently open? You know, is it Auburn? Is it Tech? Is, or Georgia Tech, I should say. Is it Nebraska? Is it Wisconsin? More on them in a second. I want you guys to sound off for me in the comment section. Next up is Wisconsin. We will not spend too much time on this one because as we all kind of thought, when they made the move to, uh, to promote Jim Leonard into the interim head coaching role and fire Paul Christ. Seems like Leonard is the favorite to win this job. He was kind of always viewed as the, as long as it's not terrible, we want to promote our defensive coordinator into this role where things have gone okay, good-ish so far for Leonard. And what is admittedly a maybe not the best situation given all the problems on offense, which, of course, Leonard's a defensive mind, different conversation there. He's gone four and two as the interim head coach with the Wisconsin Badgers. A blowout win over at Northwestern because they're terrible at football. A loss, a bit of a painful one against Michigan State. A win over Purdue, 35-24. Win over Maryland, not great showing against Iowa. And a very, very narrow and I would argue ugly win over the Nebraska Cornhuskers as well. Uh, Leonard seems to be the guy that this Wisconsin, I'll call it program, wants to hire. So... So I would be a bit surprised if, in the end, Wisconsin did not pick Jim Leonard as the head coach. That, of course, still remains to be seen, but it feels like Leonard is very much the heavy favorite to get the full-time Wisconsin job. We'll keep you guys covered on all the latest college football news and notes and whatnot here at Chat Sports, so make sure you guys are subscribed.